Hey guys, welcome to the Touchdown Table. I'm Ryan, that's Tyler, that's Jordan, and today we are going to be doing another one of our off-season outlook series, and today we are focusing on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, we are, and we're going to talk about everything from free agency to the draft. Um, just talking about things before they actually happen, making some predictions, and seeing how we think this Jaguars team can do in the future. So how about we start that with the draft? Well, they do have two first-round picks and positions of need, and I know we've talked about this a little bit. I see definitely on offense, I see wide receivers a need. And then on defense, I think truthfully, you look at the back end, finding someone to replace Jalen Ramsey, but also I think um, the defensive line uh, could also use some help even after their picks last year. Yeah, then they have two first-round picks. I don't know if you mentioned that. But they um, have, what is it, the 8th and the 20th? They have 9, nine, nine and 20. Come on. 9 and 20. We should be down. We got this. should have this down at this point. Well, I got the 20th. There you go. Uh, so they have the 9th pick and the 20th pick. And we recently uh, posted a video uh, doing a mock draft with all three of us collectively coming up with it really on the spot. It was kind of quite interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, but um, we had them getting Derek Brown with number 9. And with number 20, we had them getting T. Higgins, so I figured we'd mention those two players first because those are definitely possible. And by the way, if, if Derek Brown were to fall to 9, that yeah, would be yeah. a huge steal for the Jaguars, who got a steal last year with Josh Allen, who fell to him as well. Yeah, Derek Brown, great player, one of the best defensive players in this draft. So if he were to fall to 9, might not be the biggest need like secondary wide receiver, but it's one of those picks where it's just the talent is just too high to take the best player available. And they still do need defensive line. They're, yeah. they're, the people there, when that defense is really good, they're either gone or getting older or more washed, I guess you could say. Uh, Josh Allen is really the main threat on that de defensive line now. Uh, bringing another guy would really help him and the rest of the squad. Who They still have a decent defense, I guess. Uh, it's getting worse and worse from, from the year that they were really good to now. And another thing is... Um I really think you mentioned, you know, defensive line is still kind of a need, which it is. But I really think that the Jaguars are going to have to address this cornerback position. One, they already traded away Jalen Ramsey. And A.J. Boye is, at least right now, looking like he's going to leave in free agency because the Jaguars, you know, they're going to have some cap space struggles. So I really think they got to address this secondary either early in the draft or in free agency. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. You said it right before I did. And I know we didn't have them getting either of those two. But throughout the rest of the draft, that would be an important position to target. Lots of cornerbacks in this draft. Maybe they could get A.J. Terrell yeah. later on in the draft. We have a uh, unlasting joke about that. If Kristen Fulton is somehow there in the second round. And Damon Arnett's a guy that I specifically liked from Ohio State. I've talked about him before, getting overshadowed by Jeffrey Okuda. Mm -hmm. But still a great player that they could easily get in the second round. It would be a huge help to them. And just another position to need. They could also use an offensive tackle. So whether that's mm -hmm. uh, at the nine pick where there's really no one that they really need, which I think that there's going to be someone available still that they would want. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe they'll go offensive tackle there if they really want it. Or they could use it uh, for 20 as well if there's somebody still on the board that they like. Uh, but I just figured that was another position that they need. A lot of a lot of teams seem to be needing offensive linemen, mm -hmm. and it kind of hurts the NFL because who wants to see offensive linemen picked on draft yeah, night? Yeah, I mean... But it's what if teams are building the team the right yeah. way. They understand. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, offensive line is where it all starts, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, a guy in the second round we could be talking about for that would be Austin Jackson. Yep. If they decide to go in the second round, and we've mentioned guys in the first round as well with Mackay back in, his size would be a huge help. Andrew Thomas, a guy who Ryan loves. I'm looking at a, a mock draft, not sure whose it is, but it says Tristan Wirfs at nine. I was going to say Tristan Wirfs, Jedrick yeah. Wills, guys like that. I don't know who this guy In the is. first round, that could really be a help to their team. I don't agree with him, though. What would you say, Jordan? So I don't know who this guy is, but I don't really agree with him. What, uh, oh, he how about know, He's saying he doesn't know whose mock it is. I, was no. like, I hope you know who Tristan Wirfs oh, is no. at this point. No, I don't know who it is. Yeah. I mean, that, just, just that pick, taking Tristan Wirfs, it wouldn't be a bad pick. I think that's about, at least pick-wise, where. But as far, again, I just think Jacksonville like needs wide talent. receiver cornerback. Offensive line, I think, is later rounds for them. Yeah, exactly, which is why I mentioned um, Austin Jackson, because that could be a more realistic thing that I see them doing. Uh, but with that, let's move on to free agency. And they, it's, it's tough right now. We're in a situation where we're talking about the draft, uh, but free agency hasn't even come upon us yeah. yet. So it's difficult to decipher who they should go out and get what positions they need to go after if we don't even know who they're going to get in free agency. So this is really first things first with all these NFL teams. Um, and you mentioned quarterbacks. What other positions could they go after? 
Cornerback is one, as I mentioned, wide receiver. I really think that... They could go wide receiver yeah, in free agency, too. They could, well. do, yeah, because then maybe you don't have to worry about that in the draft. You could focus on some of the other defensive positions that we've talked about. Because this team, they were known for their defense and known for having an elite defense just a few years ago. So this isn't some, like, long-distant past that we were talking about. You know, you'll remember this team was in the AFC Championship just a few years ago. Feels like forever ago, but they were there and they almost went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, you talk about wide receivers, one name that specifically stands out to me is A.J. Green if he's mm -hmm. out there because he, and I know he got hurt last year. Yeah, he was hurt uh, for which a was, He's been hurt for a long time. But with the Bengals, he never really reached his peak. You wonder, like, has he ever gotten to that point? And I think if he went to a new team, maybe with the Jacksonville Jaguars, got something going with either Nick Foles or Gardner Minshew mm -hmm. and those other wide receivers that they've started to build in that organization – we could see a lot better things from A.J. Green later on in his career. Yeah, and then another wide receiver I can mention, just this could be a talk for a completely different video, but uh, the Cowboys, Amari Cooper, what they're going to do with all their guys that they have to keep because they have Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper uh, they need to sign back. They already gave Zeke a lot of money, and there's someone else too that I'm forgetting that uh, I think it's someone on defense that's really important for them to sign back. So. The Cowboys may have a tough time trying to get everyone back and making them happy with the amount of money that they have. You talking about Byron Jones? Uh, maybe. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Uh, Ryan, you're an AFC South guy. Could you do you know who the Jaguars' tight end is right now? Oh, I they had a committee of tight ends. I will try and find that out, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Well, that kind of that kind of proves my yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Thank, thank you for not knowing. Oh, Hunter Henry yeah. is in free agency. Oh yeah, um, Matthew well. Ors Judge maybe. I'm I'm reading some names right now. All right, Seth DeVal. You know, some of these names big. As well as um, Cole Komet and Thaddeus Moss in the draft. Oh yeah, uh, who they could end up going at the tight end position. That would be interesting Who's to see. Who's the guy from Notre Dame? Um, Cole Komet. That's Cole Komet. Yeah, he's yeah, Cole Komet. Yeah. yeah. I was watching a little bit of him yesterday. He's uh, very good. Probably my my top tight end. But we were talking about. Um, the defensive backs, there's a lot of them in free agency. Um, they need help at the safety position, and Justin Simmons would be oh. the top one there. Kind of a guy that you don't really know the name of, and I've mentioned him before. Um, but really good player. He kind of started to stand out last year, and then as well as Byron Jones mm -hmm. are two players they could end up going after. Yeah, and just back to the tight end position for a second, you know, that's another position on offense where they really, really need to address it. Yes. Because even when this team was in the AFC Championship, I don't really think their offense was that good. I think it was on the backs of their defense. Yeah. It, it, because if Blake Bortles in the AFC Championship game, it has to be on the backs <laughs> of your defense to get there. So I really just think that tight end and free agency, I look at possibly Austin Hooper. He's going to be a free agency. I know I've seen links to him yeah. either going back to Atlanta. I've seen the Patriots in the mix, but Jag the Jaguars would be a really good fit there with them needing to get uh, that spark on offense. And just another important thing to mention, uh, talking about free agency-wise, I was talking about uh, offensive linemen before. There's a few good offensive linemen uh, in free agency, I'm sure a lot of them will be probably signed back or whatever. Uh, some names that stand out. Whitworth will probably be signed back, but there's also uh, Balaga, Jason Peters. There's a bunch of guys on here uh, that are decent players, and specifically um, a lot of them are tackles, so they could probably go for one of the tackle positions if they feel like that's something that they want to address in free agency or address really at all. Uh, they should. Yeah, it's interesting with the Jaguars because they're not the year they were just two years ago, especially with their defense. Now they have open spots in almost every area of the field. I'm not trying to hate on their team, say yeah. oh they have a terrible roster. They have a lot of great players, but there's opening openings in almost every single oh, yeah. position yeah, absolutely. I mean, on the team. So. Yeah, I'm looking at something uh, from CBS Sports and it's saying off the, off off season. I don't say offensive. Off season <laughs> needs. I don't say that. Uh, it's, it has defensive line, offensive tackle, quarterback, edge rusher, cornerback, linebacker, interior, offensive line, tight end, receiver, running back. That's a lot of positions. All across the board. That's a lot of positions. Yeah. Um, and we'd even talk about running back, but they definitely could go running back at some point, too, if some of them good falls to the second round or whatever. There's really a plethora of options that they could go to. Just Sometimes it could just be, all right, there's, what's the, who's the best player available if? There's not an absolute need. Um, that's just what they were doing. It doesn't even say wide receiver yeah. on this list. Yeah, that's, that's surprising. And I know DJ Chark stood out, but they still have to address that position, in my yeah. opinion. 
And I know I know that's a lot of positions, like Jordan said and Tyler mentioned. We're not trying to hate on their team, but I was just thinking about this. There's some good players on that no, you team. You do like to hate on their team. Well, you, you used to. okay, yeah. Two, two, you know, there's always that one AFC South team that really you know grinds my gears. This year's this year was the Titans, but it's fine. Um, we're talking about the Jags. Gears. There you go. That's a, a new thing, I guess. No, I, mean, I didn't mean to do that or say it on purpose, but there you go. Grinds my gears. But the Jaguars. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought here. Uh, they <laughs> Sorry, really. I your gears no, too you, much. Yeah, there you go. But they have some good players. But I think the question is, and why there were so many positions on that list, George just read it, because you there wonder. There were 10 and then one, 11 plus the yeah. wide receiver. So there's. there's correctly. I mean, one, how, many, two, how many positions three, are there, honestly? I mean, there's 11 seven, guys on the field okay. at once, and some of them play the same position. But what I'm trying to say here is so, that. They have a lot of good players. They have some good players, but the question is, how many great players do they have? Great. Not, there's yeah. a difference between good and great. And especially after getting rid of Jalen Ramsey, you wonder, where where is the elite part of this team? Because even some really bad teams, they have that one little spark or that one player where you say, okay, this guy's great. You just don't really see that for the Jaguars, so it's not so much saying they're horrible. It's just saying they could improve at a lot of positions. And I see them improving through the draft. I don't see them signing top-tier free agents. I think they could go to lower tier guys and they're going to do some stuff for free agency because they have to do that. But the most things, uh, the most thing with this Jaguars team would have to be through the draft. They have a lot of picks. We talked about their first two picks. They have to do good in that draft process and get this team uh, started up again because yeah. Doug Marone, the coach of that team, is in kind of a hot seat yeah. and has been uh, ever actually... since that really good. Year. There was a report that he got like fired, but then yeah. they kind of backtracked and they so, kept him. So yeah, it's, really thin ice. It's about as close as it can be with him. But he and his squad have a uh, off season, a very important off season, if they want to try and save their jobs and yeah. uh, get Duval County to be back with them and go back to the stadium again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we said, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. The Jaguars just backtrack. Have the capital to do it. And Jordan's gonna kind of backtrack. The amount of pres- I. Think I, I'll count again, but the amount of positions, like counting like linebacker, different inside linebacker and outside linebacker, a different position. Yeah. I think I got 15 wow. on offense and defense, and I named 11 uh, that they need. So yeah, you know, well, and then also fullback. Fullback is included in that too, and it's not like they're going to go out and draft a fullback or anything. So it really could you could say fourteen. Sorry, no fullbacks. Really is, knows nowadays. <laughs> fullbacks are actually becoming an yeah. important part of the game. And my dad would be the first one to tell you that. <laughs> so who knows? It's probably not a uh, draft worthy, draft worthy, but maybe they can get a bigger running back and make him a fullback. Hey, the Texans drafted a fullback in the seventh round last year. It, it's I mean, a new trend. Come yeah, on. I mean, it's definitely possible. Yeah. I like how uh, this is a good way to end our video talking yeah. about fullbacks go. going to the uh, forgot, Jaguars. I forgot. Um, Special teams too, but they're really bad. Maybe they'll trade for Kyle Uzcheck or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think he's staying there. Kyle Uzcheck is a whole other yeah, animal at the, full, really at the fullback position. It's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to see that he's almost not even a fullback. Yeah. But uh, Leonard Fournette yeah, couldn't use some extra blocking scored. back there. He almost scored twice. But... Yeah, that's true. He almost did. That's true. Um, so with that, if you guys don't have anything else to say, we can wrap up this video. You know what? Um. I actually don't have anything else to say. Okay. okay. I'm well, thank you for your input, guys. I yeah. really do appreciate that. <laughs> thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and comment down below, especially on these off-season outlook videos. We love seeing your guys' comments about yeah. your team. We've had uh, people talking about the last teams that we've done, which are the Falcons and the Raiders and the Dolphins and I'm forgetting one, Buccaneers. We've go. talked about those teams. Oh, and do a good response. <laughs> from all four of those. So we want the same for this one. With that, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you guys later. See, see ya. ya.